Bochi State is famous for its tourist attraction site, historical places, and wildlife conducive supporting environment vastly stretch across the state. Apart from the famous Yankuru Resort and the Lemibro Game Reserve, Bochi State is home to the Sumu Wildlife Park with its unique variety of animals imported to diversify the classes of animals and types that give tourists the blend of beauty and diversity of nature. Sumu Wildlife Park came into the limelight in 2006 at the initiative of the former executive governor of Bauchi State, Dr. Ahmed Adamumu Azu while in Bauchi. The administration of Moazu then aimed at boosting tourism development, creating investment opportunities by attracting investors through tourism potentials in the state and opening a window of opportunity for mutual international partnership and collaboration with foreign nations in the broader perspectives of tourism exchanges and development. The story of Sumo Wildlife Park, in terms of the solid foundation of its establishment and development, under the administration of Governor Ahmed Adamu Azu, the legacies and the challenges that it passes through to this day will be told some other day. Today, we are concerned in this production with unhealthy development, a disturbing phenomenon, and a brewing communal misunderstanding and skirmishes that pose great danger to the survival of the wildlife park. Those undermining the management and safety of the natural habitat of the general wildlife environment. Corruption is a potential enemy that grounds any will of progress and development, and this is what seems to be rearing its head, as our preliminary investigations reveal. Exchange Hammer Media has unearthed how some government officials allegedly connive with local communities around the park to illegally tamper the animal's environment with farming activities. Claims of poachers and counter poachers, denials of the right to access, and the outright head-on confrontation all point to one fact, unity in corruption to undermine the effort of the government. Investigation revealed that officials assigned to manage the Sumu Wildlife Park, including some communities from Toro local government area in Bochi State, bordering the park, and some other communities of Ganjua local government area where the Sumo Park is located are complicit, with their hands looming in collaborative corruption to subvert the park. What is the genesis of the matter? How does it gradually snowball into a big issue? Who is involved and the level of involvement? Is the government aware of the matter? What is it doing about it? These are more as we find the facts of the matter with our reporter leading us to the realities on the ground. This is the road that comes out from Kafi Madaki, the headquarters of Ganju local government area, of 10 km distance leading to this village, Ringim. And from this village to Sumo Wildlife Park is about 5 km. And it is in this village that the farmland dispute is causing a call for concern between the locals in the community and a nearby Bakinrua community located in the neighboring Turu local government area. From Ringyum village, we arrived the Sumo Park just to capture the situation on the ground and our visit reveals some cogent point. This is Sumo Wildlife Park in Bauchi State, one of the tourist sites in the state and sure you remember it was created during the administration of former governor Al Haji Ahmed Adamu Muazu. The wildlife park is populated with a variety of animals brought from Namibia to boost the tourism industry in Bauchi State and to expand investment opportunities for revenue generation. Having left Sumo Park, we arrive at the border village between Ganjua and Toro local government areas. That village is Bakirua on the side of Toro local government area. This place is a border area between Ringim, Ganjo local government area, the Sumo Park, Ganjo local government area, and Bakin rural village in Toro local government area. As you can see, this road will take you to Ringim from there to Cafe Madagi, the headquarters of Ganjo local government area. And when you cross this water, over there is Garim Bakin rural village in Toro local government area.
Now to our investigation on the allegation of monumental corruption of encroaching the Sumo Park, selling parts of the land for farming activities to local farmers in the surrounding communities. And the trouble this illegal sale caused in igniting misunderstanding and discord among the warring communities that reside into different local government areas in Bauchu State. While the community of Baikin Kanaka is accusing the people of Bakirua of purchasing lands for farming and destroying crops of their rivals and making threats of some sort, the communities of Rindim and Baikin Kanaka complain of sidedness on part of the government by aligning with the people of Bakirua, denying them fairness in treatment and equally refusing to address their grievances for long or even conducting an investigation on the matter that got into the business of selling and purchase of sumo park parcels of land. On these thorny issues, we first met people of Baikin Kanaka to establish the fact of the matter. I have farmland in sumo park. We gave out 40,000 for every hectare. At Garin Kanaka, we are not more than 10 people that have farmland at the park. Waziri Haswand and I Chiruma. And there is one person in Shagari area. I have forgotten his name. The community leader of Kanaka has 2 hectares. One Maikiri has 3 hectares. One Alaji Chindu has 2 hectares. And one Lawan has 2 hectares. Our parents spent several years farming on the land. During the time of former governor Ahmad Adamu Muazu, he invited our community leaders and informed them that he needed the entire forest for wildlife park to be established there. He made promises which include making sure that our children get employed, schools will be built, and roads constructed. But none of this was carried out except for the forest guards that were engaged. Suddenly, we heard that the forest was allocated to the people of Toro local government for farming. While the entire area is in Ganjua, local government area, we deserve to be allocated farmlands more than the people of Toro local government because the land constitute part of Ganjua and not Toro. Our community leader of Baikin Kanaka has been restraining us from igniting any communal disturbances. But the people in other communities close to us have taken a unilateral decision and allocated to themselves some portions of the forest for farming activities. We are calling on the government not to confiscate the areas allocated to the people. Instead, it will make allocations to those that have been denied in the first instance. I am the Wazir in Bakin Kanaka and I got two hectares of farmland having paid for it at the rate of 80,000. The community leader then Juma facilitated that for me. Each hectare of the farmland cost 40,000 naira. However, I was told that we will farm on the land for just a few years and there will be retrieved from us. We are closer to the forest and therefore more deserving to be allocated with pieces of land for farming and not the people of Bakenrua. Yes, I have farmland at Sumu Park, which I acquired at the rate of 40,000. We can conveniently say that we have both won and lost because the entire park has been handed over to the people of the local government. Our neighbors, on their own volition, went and allocated to themselves some portions of the land because they noticed that some allocations were made to the people of Turu. But as original owners of the land, they have been denied that privilege. They resorted to self-help. We are law-abiding citizens, and so we are appealing to the government to consider our demand. Allocate enough farmlands that will be enough for our sustenance and if the land is allocated to the Fulani only for cattle rearing, then that will be so terrible. The people, especially farmers on the side of Bagirua, who are being accused as intruders from the local government area, have bare their minds equally with their own side of the story. I have one hectare of land allocated to me. I was told to continue using it, but the next farmland close to mine belongs to my neighbor. We call on the government to intervene in this issue. Equally, the community leader of Bakirua speaks on his side of the story to reveal the facts of the matter. 
a lokacin da ya kawo namun daji tsakanin when the wildlife animals were brought to sumu park during the administration of former governor ahmad adamu azu the distance between the village of ringim and the park was about 5 km between sumu and the park it's 6 km between ngwarwawa area and the park it's another 6 km but between bakin ruwa and the park is just few meters away that shows how close we are to the park every village area has a school but none in my area before the wildlife animals were brought here we used to go into the forest but we don't kill the animals when dr kasim brought the animals we discussed with him the issue of allocation of areas that we can farm but up to the end of the muazo administration no one was allocated any farmland later i met the manager of sumo park adamu ajia popularly known as moses and requested that he should allocate some areas for us 3 years later he came to inform me that he has been directed by the ministry to come and allocate the forest area at the time i requested the understanding of the manager of sumo park that we should involve ganjua local government councils forest department officers so that they know about our problem i went to the secretary of the local government and met my friend who was the secretary ubandomo madaki of bauchi then we took the land and survey officer of the local government to ganjua and the land was allocated to the people later just to douse any future complaints the community leader of ringim was also allocated 20 hectares of land the community leader of bakin kanaka was given 10 hectares you will notice that even the bushes they clear are much more valued than the money they paid for the purchase of the land this was done long before the present permanent secretary and the honorable commissioner was appointed into the office and when i was asked to stop people from farming on the land i said it it is better they send somebody to serve as a witness when this is communicated the manager sumo park kasim isa was directed to come and i invited the people so that he addressed the matter but still they continued with the farming activities we have the document as evidence that the land was allocated to us it was signed by the honorable commissioner director and permanent secretary people of ringim just decided to start activities on the land without government's permission misunderstanding start between garinkawu community in toro local government area and ringim community in ganjo local government area when i was informed of the development i visited the communities for reconciliation but ringim community pelted me with stones and when the news reached my community of bakinrua they mobilized to take revenge on the ringim community i pacified my people and the matter what had done these are some of the underlying issues brewing misunderstanding between my people and those from ringim community this is because the ringim community wants our people to be denied any right to farming activity in the park and that is why my people rejected the idea vowing not to allow it happen the situation is already a recipe for violence they are just looking for trouble and that is why the encroach places already allocated to us for farming activities instead of them to remain in areas they have already illegally allocated to themselves i didn't collect anything from them but i heard that they have bought it they illegally gave money to someone who allocated them the land we advise that the government shouldn't confiscate the lands because we farm to feed ourselves if government confiscate the land we don't know how to survive on the other hand the community of ringim also in ganjua local government area joined the people of baking kanaka in making the same complaint of denial of opportunity to farm freely instead of the little they have some people have the audacity to destroy without any move to restrain them officially wannan gona yeji ne wanda sai iyayen mu da kakanin mu i didn't purchase the land i just cleared the place and start farming because our fathers and forefathers have been farming here but now the land belongs to the government when we noticed that the land was allocated to some other people not from our local government we informed the ministry of tourism so that they stopped them when this failed we decided to start farming here too we demand that justice be done one the irgiti dole kokuri mu dai wannan dandaraji 
this is my farm. It wasn't allocated to me by the government. But we noticed that people from Bakinrua community into a local government area have approval for farming activities here. But we have been denied. That is why we decided to come and start farming here too. Now you can see our crops have been touched, but that of Bakinrua community have not been touched. Oh. My farm is about 3 hectares that it has been destroyed by headsmen deliberately. We appeal to the government to allocate the place to us, just like they allocated to communities from to a local government area. We have cleared the forest to farm, but we are not challenging the government. We did that because we have seen that some other people have been allocated to do so, but we have been denied. We have informed the ministry that we are not challenging the government, but we have been complaining and we are not being given attention. We appeal to the government to intervene in the matter between us and our neighbors, and we request that we should also be given the chance to purchase the land as did our neighbors. We are at loggerheads with Kawu and Bakinrua communities because of the forest area allocated to them, which belongs to Ganjua and not to our local government, thus denying us. I planted two bags of rice on this farm. We had pursued the allocation of, of the land for farming at least 20 times, but we were denied. We now realize that some people connived with Fulani headsmen and destroyed our farms. We are not challenging the government, but we appeal for fairness and we demand that land be allocated to us too. Uh. This is my farm. We just cleared this place and planted crops because we need food to survive. We did our best to get approval for allocation but to no avail. And we decided to place ourselves close to our neighbors allocated with the land before we get our own approval. My name is Mekano Muhammad, popularly known as Aruzikin Kamutani, residing at Ringim. I am the chairman of Sumu Park Vanguard for the protection of the park at Sumu. And we are a registered association with both Ganjua Local Government Council and Boucher State. When the wildlife animals were brought here, all community leaders were invited. The subject matter borders on protection of the park. We all promised to do our best to protect it. However, we just heard that the leader of the Inra community, Juji Adamu, with the connivance of the manager Sumu Park named Moses Adamo Ajia have been selling out parts of the park to the people of Bakinrua and others. For example, Sarikin Farm by King Kaswa was one of those the land was sold to. The aftermath of selling our parts, the aftermath of selling out parts of the Sumu Park because the trouble that was ignited between the people of Ganjua and to local government areas. It is because the source of trouble between Fulani and farmers, and trouble between farmers and farmlands from Ringim and Bakinrua. Headsmen have trespassed into the farmlands of the people of Ringim and destroyed farms and left farmlands belonging to the people of Toro local government area intact. Trees were felled and a border was demarcated between the communities. All our farmlands were destroyed, thus leaving their own intact. There was a time people of Ringim blocked road for Bakinrua people. As a result of the development, the other faction threatened not to sell farm products to people from Bakinrua. After informing the authorities appropriately, we also blocked the road to demonstrate that we can do it, but police were sent to calm down the situation. In the next 13 days, if the government fails to take steps to stop them, in my position as chairman of Association for Protection of the Park, we will direct our people that none should go and purchase further land in addition to the ones in their disposals. If the government stops them, that is all. We appeal to the government to resolve the matter amicably and do the netfall. We need intervention in resolving this crisis, and we have confidence that government will do something. The community leader of Baikin Kanaka has been at the center of this storm, and we request that he tells the details which he obliges in this interview. I Magana and Daji in a Gandhi Daji of the park. One is a Kandagachi in the Daji, a good row of Manu, my mother, Nangulan. One day, then, the children, young Kanaka, 
What caused the misunderstanding about the Sumu Park was that some people from Turu local government communities, specifically communities of Bakinrua and Kawu, were allocated the lands instead of people from Ganjua local government area where the park is. This is what particularly triggered our people to resort to self-help. The Ringim community felt otherwise and without the permission of the government cleared portions of the land for farming. Later, the community leader of Bakinrua told me that 10 hectares each have been allocated to me and the Rengim community leader. We were told to give 20,000 naira for each hectare, but we collected 40,000 naira each. The community leader of Irwa was the representative who supervised the allocation exercise of the lands. We the community leaders were invited by Hamlet's leaders of Baikin Kanaka, Kafim Madaki and those of Rengim, Tafizua, Surin Tafizua at the meeting. We were told to pay particular attention to safeguarding the park properly. Later, the chairman of Ganjwa local government summoned us in the presence of security agencies and warned us of dangers of felling trees in the park without government's permission. I have tried to sensitize the people on the matter and they should avoid anything inimical that endangers the safety of the park and they complied. We appeal to the government not to disregard this matter because trouble is brewing and it is better to be fair to all immediately. I called on my fellow community leaders that we should be law-abiding and sensitize their communities as I did so that peace will prevail in our domain. Alhaji Muhammad Nasir Yusuf, the General Manager of Bochi State Tourism Board, he speaks on this unfortunate development at Sumo Wildlife Park, admitting the involvement of some officials of the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and the government position on the matter. <laughs> We received information on what happened in the Sumo Park. It actually happened without the approval of Bochi state government. All the illegal sales of the land in the park. It was handiwork of some government officials out of selfish interest. Reminded that some community leaders and residents of communities within the Sumo Park area have alleged to have paid money to some government officials and they were in position of written agreement that justify why they farm in the park. The manager concedes. The attention of the government has been drawn to this issue and immediately the government appointed a special committee under my supervision. After investigation, we discovered that there was a documented agreement to that effect, which served as evidence in the hands of many residents allocated with pieces of land. However, our investigation revealed that it was done by some of our staff who were involved in the scandal. And it happened without the knowledge of the permanent secretary in the ministry. Therefore, we have immediately taken steps of informing both Ganjua and Toro local government councils the position of the state government on the matter, that it has revoked any agreements in possession of the residents of the communities done in the past. Furthermore, in that direction, we had ordered anybody who confesses that he is working on the farm because it was either leased to him or given on temporary term. All have been revoked henceforth. Asked who signed the agreement on the document in possession of the farmers, the manager said, It was signed by some of our staff because of selfish interest. The staff officer of the ministry at that time and one other director a deceased. This necessitated that we summoned all the communities of Ringim, Bakin Kanaka, Bakin Rua, Sumu and Kafi Madaki to discuss and inform them on the true situation on the matter. Who were the culprits involved in the scandal? The manager said they have identified their staff. Exactly, we have identified our staff involved like the staff officer in the ministry of that time and a deceased director and the manager of the Sumu Park and the rest. We are still investigating the matter even though one of them is dead. We are still expanding investigation because some community leaders are involved. God's willing, soon you will hear step taken by the government on the matter. The state government is fully aware of the foolishness of its citizens and it will not allow that to go unpunished. Those who took unilateral decision and started tempering the forest illegally simply because they have noticed some people 
we are doing that. We have warned them against such a When pressed harder to name the culprits, or those alleged to have been involved like he conceded, the general manager refused to name the corrupt officials in the ministry. He also did not provide tangible evidence that the culprits were under investigation, raising suspicion as to whether he was being truthful with the claim that the culprits were under investigation and that government was serious in bringing the culprits to book. The inability of the general manager to name the culprit and present tangible evidence that they were under investigation to present how government officials in position of authority continue to shield corrupt elements who consistently subvert the system for their selfish ends and get away with their dastardly acts.